All right, so let's officially let's officially get started on this beautiful Tuesday morning, April or August twenty fourth, <laughs> April. Um, it's good to see everybody. Tons of people here. We love this. Um, as always, you guys would like to go around the room. We'd like to welcome all of our guests today. So we have a few guests on the line today. Um, Mel, I know that you have a guest on the line today. Would you like to introduce your guest, Nina? Yes. Good morning, everyone. I have a guest on the line, Nina. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. She's an unlicensed um, person, just curious about learning about real estate. And I told her that she could come on the call, learn about our vibe, tap in, ask questions. Um, I think this is a great way for anyone that's not licensed to get a taste of what being a realtor is like. So let's not scare the shit out of her um, and keep it moving. <laughs> hey, Nina. All right, Nina, did you want to say hi? Quick hello. Yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate the invite and I'm, yeah, I'm here to learn. Awesome. Awesome. We'll have some fun. This is going to be a little bit different of a meeting than what you would probably think a real real estate meeting would be. We have done things absolutely um, different. We threw conformity out the window a long time ago. So uh, welcome to our environment. Uh, let's turn it over to Jay Singh. Jay Singh, I know that you have a guest here. Let's go ahead and introduce your guest. Good morning, everyone. My uh, guest name is Swami. He also is an unlicensed person, uh, very interested in the energy and just the awesomeness that we bring. Uh, so just in the spirit of throwing conformity out the window, it's like, hey, come on, join us, see what we're about and take that energy and bring it to other places and it'll all just reverberate in a, in a positive way. Awesome. Awesome. I don't see Swami on right now, but maybe I'm missing it or maybe he's registered under a different name, but if he you are might here, be in the waiting room. Cause he, he told me he's, he's joining us. He, he just came in like a second ago. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, welcome Swami. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for attending our meeting this week. Uh, let's go over to Kenny. Who do we have? You have Beverly as a guest today. Yeah. Bouncy are on. Um, I know that Lynn has a guest on. Lynn, let's go ahead and introduce your guest. Hi, uh, my guest is Vin. She um, and I met last year through my listing. So she is actually a past client and she got licensed just last month. And she, I told her to check out Team Fast. Vin, awesome. something? Yes, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Vin. And like Lynn just mentioned, uh, we met through uh, my uh, home purchase uh, last year, Lynn was extremely helpful and I got inspired to learn more about real estate. So excited to meet everyone here. Um, I just passed my real exam, a real estate exam last month. Uh, so still in early process of finding a brokerage. So hopefully to learn a little bit about uh, Team Fast uh, today. Love it. I love it. Well, congratulations. And a lot of times when we see clients that become agents, it's either one of two reasons, right? It's either I had a wonderful experience and I want to do that and be able to create that for other people. Or like Christina Darrow's case, I had a horrible experience, didn't like my agent, and I want to show people a different way. So I'm glad you had a great experience with Lynn. Her business has taken off. And so um, welcome to our environment and have some fun here today. Um, do we have any other guests on the line today? Anybody else going once, going twice? Cool. Hey, this is Jesse. Jesse, what's up, big dog? How are you, my man? Go ahead and introduce hey, yourself to the people that have been with you. Oh, I'm Jesse. Um, I've been with you guys probably about a month or so now. Um, really just getting started, excited. I've got my wife uh, with me as my guest today. Um, she's also working towards getting her real estate license. Nice, my man. Well, welcome. What's your wife's name? Uh, Crystal. Morning, Crystal. Thank you for being here. I'm sure you've heard on the background, some of the meetings and Jesse's at every single coaching session three times a week. So welcome to this environment and, and thanks for being here. Love it, love it. All right, guys, thank well, let's go ahead and say again. I said, thank you, happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, well, let's go ahead and move forward. Um, as always, if you guys uh, would, please put your wins and shout outs in the chat below. Also, if we're not connected with you already on social and you're new to this environment, please put your Instagram handle below. That way we can all stay connected. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the one and only, the great, the oracle, the myth, the legend. I'm going to turn it over to Miss uh, Karina to do a quick teaching moment. So let me turn the mic over to you, Karina. 
Hey everybody. Um, I am really excited about a couple of different things this week. I went to the RPA class last week. I know it doesn't sound super exciting, but it was four hours of action packed um, <clears throat> review of the new contract that's coming. Don't worry, it's not coming till December. We have plenty of time to learn it. I just want this on your radar so you're not shocked when you see the new one. It's 16 pages. Please take a class through the CAR or your local association. Those are the ones that are going to give you the most information on this really dense contract, um, which actually clears up some things that are already in existence. So it's a good refresher for everybody, as well as um, great for the new agents too. Um, and then of course, EXP will do shorter classes, breaking it down uh, around de December, you know, when it comes out. Uh, but my biggest announcement is probably <laughs> the hugest relief to me personally, and it is that my department has expanded. Uh, we now, <laughs> yes, we now have Laura Spielman, our operations coordinator, who's going to be taking over sales tracking and facilitating commission demands. So moving forward, I am no longer your point of contact when you get into contract or have a new signed listing agreement. Uh, I'll share the link in Slack, in my Slack channel shortly for you guys to fill it out. It'll make tracking a lot easier. Hopefully we'll you know, get this, this part streamlined for her, but we really need your help and cooperation. So as soon as you get that sign listing, as soon as you have a new contract, we should be top of mind filling this, this link out. Um, this affects your commission checks. So getting paid, winning awards, sales team announcements, like basically everything is contingent on this information getting to us. So please, as I always say, help us help you. I don't know if Laura wants to say anything <laughs> really quickly or not. I don't want to listen, put her on the spot, listen. but first off, Karina, you know she does. She got she did her hair. She's <laughs> ready for the mic today. She's ready for the camera today. <laughs> and, and <laughs> Laura, take it away. Yeah, normally I don't put cameras on because normally I don't put makeup on or whatever unless I have to go to the office. Um, so I was like, all right, well. I'm sort of going to the office today. Uh, so my name is Laura. Um, I came from Compass. Um, overall, I've been working in real estate for about five years in total. Um, back, <laughs> thanks uh, for the nice comments in the chat section. Um, I did BPOs exclusively for about two years after the crash, uh, left the country, let my real estate license lapse because I didn't think I was coming back, came back, reinstated, um, doing back-end work for a team at Compass until I came here. So happy to be here and looking forward to assisting you all. Love it. Thanks, Laura. Love it. And, and, and I, think, uh, I think we heard Karina say action packed. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I wasn't even kidding. I was so excited. I was like gripping the form and writing copious notes and like just geeking out for four solid hours. So. <laughs> love That's it, me. love it. <laughs> you guys, um, so so officially welcome, Laura. Obviously, um, you know we've been talking with Laura for quite a few months now, and and what she brings to the table is that you know a, an additional layer of support for you guys. She can help with commission demands and just really help. Um, you know the big picture. So Laura, we're stoked to have you. We're super grateful to have you. And you guys, let's just take a quick look back at this, I and mean, I won't go too far back in the weeds. But when when I first started with the company, it was Kenny and Karina. And just, you know, really kind of figuring everything out. At that time, there was 26 of us. Now we're right around the 180 mark of agent population. Um, so then it became me, Karina, and, and Kenny. Then we brought on um, John first, or was it Molly first? Well, both of them came on right around the same time. Both of them had different roles in that what they're in now. John came on as the trainer. Molly came on as kind of like a catch-all and an admin support uh, before she was even a director. Now, John's the director of operations. Molly is the director of, of, of onboarding and partnership relationships. Um, and now we have Drea, who's going to help with all kinds of different things to help you guys grow your business. Now we have Laura. We have all of our squad leaders in Eric, Walt, Dewey, Kate, Kevin, Cynthia, Melody. Cynthia's building our, she both helped us build our mighty network. So you guys, we think about big picture. The leadership department is going to grow. We are going to be a billion dollar company uh, by the end of next year. So 
Um, there's going to be tons of opportunities within the company if this is where you choose to go. So um, you guys, I feel like you're at the tipping point of a massive IPO and we're going to do nothing but continue to grow and continue to grow. So thank you to all the leaders that are here and thank you to our future leaders that are going to continue to even more future success and agent support. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it over to a couple agents right now. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ryan Combs. You know him, you love him. Um, I want to get his takeaways from the Tony Robbins event because unfortunately I wasn't able to be there. It meant the world to me, but I had other responsibilities. But I saw the stories. I saw the excitement. I know the work that has been done. But now I know that you're back. This is where the real work starts to take place. This is where the massive action takes place. So I want to hear from you guys in your own words and in your own takeaways. I'm turning over to you, Ryan. Kind of tell me, you know, kind of tell me what your takeaways were and what you are going to put into action. So take the mic for a moment. Awesome. Thanks for uh, calling on me. I think overall, before the nuggets from the actual conference, I think one of the biggest takeaways is like the team bonding you get at these events. Um, I know people didn't go for various reasons, but, um, you know, you it's hard to build culture if you don't come into the office or you don't attend the team event. So I think this was three or four days of just really us breaking bread and enjoying each other's company. Um, and it was a beautiful thing. I got to talk to teammates I don't get to interact with very often. But from the conference itself, one of the main things is, or the first thing I got is the hard things don't get easier, but still need to get done. And the story that I got this from is Tony Robbins talked about, um, in his huge man-made millionaire, billionaire lagoon, he jumps in every morning and it's freezing cold. And he talked about the fact that I do this to shock my system, to wake me up, to have more energy. And I hate it every day. And in my head that clicked because I was like, man, I hate making cold calls every day, but I still have to do it. Um, I hate waking up at 5 a.m. every day. People see my IG stories and they like, think I'm special. I hate it. I hit snooze just like everybody else still get up. So that was one thing that resonated with me. Um, number two, he mentioned to figure out what your irresistible offer is. So he was talking about Zappos and how when it was a brand new company, they were trying to figure out how to mail shoes to people. And it finally clicked that not only are we going to do free shipping there, but we're going to offer free returns. And that's how they got women all across the country to buy 10 shoes at a time, try them all on. And a lot of times they kept them anyway. So they never saw a dip. So us as realtors, what is our irresistible offer to our client? Everybody and their mom is a real estate agent. So what is going to be your irresistible proposition? And then the third thing is visualization. So not just visual, visualization of your goals, but visualization of every element of your business. So he talked about how Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, all these all-star athletes, they take so many mental reps without the ball, without swinging the golf club, and they're visualizing the ball going in the hoop. So, you know, visualize yourself making the phone calls and the client accepting the appointment. Visualize um, that you going into escrow and what that call to your client's gonna look like. All those little steps that you visualize are going to help take you to the next step. And also in terms of your goals, like I haven't made a vision board in forever. So what, um, you know, just visualizing those goals, putting them in front of you, test driving the car, all that stuff. And then lastly, I'll end it with this. What I'm going to implement coming back is documenting my journey and experience with the team specifically, because I'm sure I'm in the same boat as a lot of new agents. I haven't produced a lot of deals. So I feel like agent attraction is like too early but if you document the tools we have access to you document the culture and you also produce at the same time then you're going to start creating a buzz and people are going to be are going to naturally just hit you up and be interested so sorry for my long uh i feel like i took more time but um it was a great experience and uh i definitely i took a lot more than that from it man no i i absolutely love it and and, um, you know, I, I called on you for a reason. And, and so, yeah, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So love your takeaways, love what your action plan is. Just so you guys know, um, Ryan and I, 
something he created. He has an accountability contract with me that he created, that he filled in, that I helped him refine. And it's something that we're focused on. Now he has all this new energy, new thoughts and new ideas. And so super, super stoked for you guys. And I just wanted to say something right now. Um, this is a milestone for our company. And I'm really, really having an emotional moment right now. We just hit 100 participants at our meeting. We've had this vision forever. We said what we were going to create in this company. I'm so glad that you said that, Ryan. We said this a long time ago. We've always had that vision. We always knew what we were working towards. And look at this, 100 people in this room. So let's give Ryan and let's give all your brothers and sisters in this room a giant fucking round of applause. Because... Listen, like, do we, I have goosebumps right now. Do we always say that showing up is half the battle? Look at your brothers and sisters, come to this environment, support. These numbers keep on going up. You guys, we had 57 people at coaching just yesterday. And here we are a day later and a hundred of you are showing up for our team meeting. I'm absolutely in awe of you guys, but let me turn it over to Christina Darrow. I had same questions and takeaways for you. So Ryan, thank you. Let's turn it over to Christina Darrow. Hey, I'm good. I have goosebumps right now. Yay. Well, first off, Kenny, thank you so much for taking us. Um, it was beyond my expectation. And I have to piggyback on what Ryan just said, the bonding. I had so much fun with so many people that I wouldn't usually, you know, see outside of my norm. And I'm so appreciative and thankful for that. Like I have goosebumps. Okay. Anyway, so three things I wrote them down and I'm going to give you guys examples because this is how it resonated with me. And this is what Tony Robbins did with us. So number one tip, big takeaway is focusing on my energy. And a quote he says is emotions are created by motion. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he, what he said is when you work out, you feel better and you're happier. And then from there, it's a domino effect. And I had to think back and he, he made us do these exercises where he would make us like talk to a partner or think back to it in a situation. Last year, I worked out five days a week, sometimes twice per day on my Peloton. I was the most fit. I was so happy and I had so much energy. And what Tony Robbins point is, and my takeaway from that is I need to get up and, you know, move. When we move, we're going to feel better about ourselves. And when we feel better about ourselves, we're going to have better relationships at home, at work. And our outlook and energy is just going to be tenfold. So that was something huge. It's something we know, but it's how he made us understand it. And he made us do all these crazy exercises, jumping on top of chairs and screaming and yelling. It was the coolest thing ever. And that was my first takeaway. So move <laughs> like this morning, I walked my dog yesterday and today, like, you know, I'm getting back into my habits. So that was number one. Number two is giving. And his exact quote is when we give, we feel alive. And he has given um, over 700 million meals out in six years. And he's shooting for a billion by the end of this year, which is crazy. And I was remembering back. Sorry, guys. I was rem rem remembering back to Christmas and I, instead of spending money on my family, I spent it all on a homeless shelter in Manteca and I will never forget the feeling and, you know, just listening to Tony Robbins and remembering that I'm like, holy crap, he's right. When you give, you feel so amazing. So if anybody wants something to do, I don't know if you've heard what's been, uh, what's going on in Afghanistan, but we have a whole bunch of refugees coming our way and I signed up through some program on Instagram to be, you know, just to help like get kids to schools, help, you know, navigate supplies. So if anybody wants to help, there's an outlet. That's number two. Last one, Elias, sorry. Number three, goals. Once you see a goal, you can't unsee it. Don't write it on your phone. Don't speak it out. I mean, of course, speak it out loud, but actually write it on a piece of paper and put it in front of your face. That way you have to look at your goals every single day. Yesterday, Elias and I got off a call and I wrote down my goals. I actually executed what he and I discussed, which was cold calling, not cold calling, but calls. I followed up on some leads from an open house. I hand selected her 10 houses that I sent her. 9.30 last night, she called me and said, hey, we like this house. And she's been like dead on my, on my real scout, like no movement. I just followed Elias's lead yesterday. And today I'm going to go show her the house and hopefully write a $1.6 million offer. So follow yeah. your goals, write them down. Thank you, Tony Robbins. And thank you, Elias. Awesome. So. Christina, love it. Love the energy. And you know what? 
And you said motion creates emotion. Look at Kyle Hively. If you've ever been around Kyle, he fucking moves and he's dancing. Oh, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Pick up the phone. Let's go. Who wants to I'll close you? Right? That motion creates emotion, creates a feeling, it creates that energy. So, Christine, I'm glad that you brought that up. Really great topics, really great points. And I'm glad that you had so much sense of community while you're there. Let's go over to Melody. Melody, I'm going to end it with you. And then we're going to get right into stats for the week. And so you guys... Thank you, thank you, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Christina, Melody. Let's go ahead and bring it home on this topic. Thank you, Elias. Thank you for giving me a little bit of time to speak. I love what Ryan said. Um, definitely love what Karina said. I think that uh, that whole experience was life-changing for me. It's something that I'm never going to forget. And being front row center with Kenny and my coach, Raquel, like, three rows back from center stage was like just an epic moment for me that I just feel like my whole career was like boiling up to that moment. It was like a culmination of that moment and all the stars aligned. So it was really, really special to me. So thank you, Kenny, for playing along and being my partner for all of those corny activities. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. Our energy is very opposite. So uh, that was, that was interesting. Uh, my three takeaways is in love with your clients, not the product, not the service. You are not your brokerage. You are not your product. You are not your service. We are absolutely here to fall in love with our clients and to fall in love with their process. The more passion and enthusiasm that you can bring to your clients' lives, the more impactful you will be, the more influence you will have. And that just happens organically. That's number one. Number two for me, and this is something that I personally do, and I'm sure you guys that, that have been following my journey have witnessed this, always strive for innovation. Always stay hungry. Never get complacent. Never say, oh, well, things are good right now. Things are going great. I have a couple of escrows and I, you know, I'm, I'm good. I don't need to strive because I'm comfortable. I think complacency and being comfortable are two things that will make you lose, especially in this business. The only people that are getting to the next level are the people that are constantly innovating, growing, and hungry. So stay hungry. Don't ever get complacent. That's number two. The third thing that I have to say is set yourself apart from the competition with your energy. I know that Christina touched on this a little bit, but I truly do believe there is no scarcity when it comes to your energy. There is nobody on this Zoom call that has my energy. I know that. There's nobody on this Zoom call that has Elias's energy or Kyle's energy or anyone else's energy. That's something that you own and you really have to tap into that as much as you can. Go for a run, meditate, do whatever you need to do, Pray, whatever that is that you do, that you know how to do to tap into your own energy, to perform at a high level, do it. Force yourself to do it and get into that state every single day. A body in motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays at rest. So you guys get to choose how you want your day to go every single day. Choose to innovate choose to give back, choose to fall in love with your client and their journey and your fellow team members and choose to use your energy to step away from the competition because there's absolutely no scarcity. There's enough to go around for everybody on this call. So tap in to your own wealth and give back. That's my message. Beautiful. You guys, let's give them three a giant round of applause for their contributions to the team this morning. Really, really appreciate it. We're going to do more and more of this. Guest speakers have different energies on the call. So you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for your insight. And I love it. I mean, everyone had different viewpoints, but I absolutely love it. So you guys, thank you for your contributions. And I'm looking forward to watching everyone's career take off even, um, even further from here on out. So let's get right into the other portions of the meeting, you guys. Uh, let's go into productivity and new escrow. So let's talk about our CSU updates for the week. So... We have um, our hours working on our business. Amy Powlin came in at number one. I love seeing this. Kim Tran right behind her at number two. Um, Donna Chan came in at number three. Ronnie Escalante came in at number four. 
And Fred, who's one of our newer agents, came in at number five. So great job to each of you for making the CSU leaderboard. Let's talk about hours working in your business. Once again, these are income producing activities. Kim Tran came in at number one. Kim, way to step up in a big way. Amy came in at number two. Uh, Donna and Ronnie Escalante tied at number three. And Gabrielle came in at number four. So great job to you all. Um, con um, conversations with clients. Now, I think these numbers are probably a little bit higher, but I'm only going based off what was tracked in CSU. I know that you guys probably had more conversations than this, but Michael the Savage came in at number one. And let's give Michael a giant round of applause. Just got himself a brand new whip out there, killing it, doing big things. Now he's got himself a new Tesla. We see you, big dog. Keep on crushing it. Because uh, if you ask Eric and I where we were at before we were 25, we were probably waking up in a bar somewhere or passed out in a bar smelling like whiskey. So my man, you're doing big things. Love seeing your growth and your energy. Number two was a tie between Gabrielle and Mirnaz. Uh, Amy Imhoff came in at number three. And you know, Amy, I want to say hats off to you. I saw your probate video that you created. You put it out on social, stepping out of your comfort zone, did something that was new, something that was different. So I really like the work that you're putting out. And Nicole Kappel, dealing with some ch um, challenging, uh, a challenging transaction, still managed to track all of her stats. So Nicole, great job to you. Um, buyer showings. Uh, Lynn came in at number one with 10 showings. Uh, Amy Inhoff came in at number two, tied oh, with Brittany. Like, Kim Tran came in at number three. Stupid fuck. Like, someone's cussing. Uh, so someone, can you take yourself off of mute? And please be cognizant if you are going to cuss and just take yourself off of mute. Thank, or put yourself on mute. Thank you. And then Amy coming in at number four. So great job to everybody that made the CSU leaderboard. Um, and then we want to talk about this, you guys. This is something that is coming soon. We want you guys to tell us in Slack before the meeting. Let's talk about community contributions. A lot of you are doing different things in your community, different events, different things that you're gonna to do to give back to your communities. We wanna start highlighting that in our meetings. So if you guys are doing a food drive, a backpack drive, if you guys are doing something special in your farm, if you did a, um, you know, a um, ice cream chuck, a churro dude, Taco Tuesday, whatever that is, Tell us what you're doing in your community. That way we can feature you every single Tuesday and add a slide for you. So looking forward to seeing you guys out in the communities making an impact. Now, let's get right into new escrows for the week. So uh, you know her, you love her, Stephanie Pelasama, Miss Appointment Setter, got in the contract once again. The King and uh, Martha got in contract for 506000 Chris Ambajon up in our San Sacramento market got in contract for four hundred thirty-five. dollars and Pui, you know him, you love him, got in contract for 540000 Eric, I'm have you talk about this deal, my man. Let me turn it over to you. It canceled yesterday. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Well, uh, before we do, though, I want to give a sh major shout out to uh, Martha because she made it all happen while I was um, conventioning. And yeah, she's the bomb. But yeah, unfortunately, we had to cancel. So, all right. Well, hey, you know, it, it happens the more you write, you know, it's going to happen. But congratulations to you guys nonetheless. Um, and you still have the client. They, this just wasn't the right home for them, right? Moving on. <laughs> um, so, let's go to the category of 550,000 to 750,000. Um, you have Miss Nicole Capel. I'm probably going to call on you, Nicole, to talk about this deal. We have Armando Castillo and Ben Rojas at 599,000. Joaquin coming in with another escrow for 600,000 and Mr. JJ coming in at 615,000. Great job to all of you. Nicole, let me turn it over to you to talk about this particular transaction because I know it's been a pain in the ass. Uh, it has, it definitely has, but thank you for the recognition. Um, yeah, this listing was a family member's listing in Vacaville, great little house, listed it on a Thursday, went pending uh, five days later. So, you know, it definitely had its challenges, but I have to acknowledge Cade Hudson, Karina, Mel, I couldn't have done it without the team. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Well, well great job. And I love what you've been doing and, you know, creating more content, you're putting out reels. So uh, really good stuff and, and congratulations. I know this one was a headache. Thank you. Um, so uh, moving on, same category, guys. Mr. Ben Rojas, once again, 675. Um, Weston means business and Carmen Hernandez had two transactions, 675,000. Great job, you guys. Um, Alicia came in with a $685,000 deal 
and Leo came in at 695,000. Uh, let's turn it over to Weston Means Business. Weston, let's talk a little bit about this deal and this partnership deal with Carmen. My man, take it away. Weston Means, you there? Going once, going twice. All right, we're going to move on. Mylisha, why don't you talk about your deal? Sure, sure. Here I am. <laughs> Mute, unmute. Um, yeah, so this was um, an old client who I had been working with. Um, he had been um, just kind of a random Zillow lead. And then he um, he disappeared. Um, he said he got really busy at work. And I had to do this thing that I find very challenging, which is stay top of mind, touch base, but not be pesky. And um, I find that really challenging because I'm really good at um, being aggressive and assertive. I'm also really good at completely disappearing. Um, so finding that balance of like just kind of circling back in a very non intrusive manner. And I was so excited when out of the blue, he contacted me and said, we're ready. <laughs> and then we found something right away. So that was that was amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I, I, and I love that, you know, finding that balance of I'm super aggressive, I'm super assertive, or then I ghost. So I love that you're finding that balance and it's all work in progress, right? So uh, congratulations to you and um, awesome. Let's move on. Um, more new escrows. We have Jeff Phillips in contract, two transactions, and then we have this new dynamic duo that has developed in Julie and the rock star Roxanne. So I uh, wanted to turn it over to one of you, Jeff Phillips. Do you want to talk about this deal? Definitely. Um, so this go. was a, de a deal that came in from Julie. Basically, she hit me up, said, hey, um, we had somebody come through the open house. Would you like to write for them? And I was like, of course. Like, yeah, and especially because I knew it was with Roxanne and Julie. And I do have to say, like, they are beautiful people. I'm so happy to be working with them. Um, the name came through as Kangaroo Man, but we made it work. It was so fun. Karina helped me out. I thank you so much. But no, like, for real, like, I really spoke this into existence. It was one of my first trips to the Walnut Creek office. And, like, Roxanne had came in. And she was giving us game that, like, people pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get. Like, and I'm literally sitting there new. And I'm just sitting there, like, I'm soaking it all in, not saying anything. And I was like, yo, I want to do a deal with her. Like, I want to be to a point where when she gets a contract from me, she's like, yo, I like this contract. And that's one of the things she said when I got it, when I turned it in, she was like, you wrote a clean contract. So that was so beautiful. Cause it was like, I really like from that day was like, I need to get in with Julie. I need to get in with Roxanne. And here we are. Man, I, I absolutely love that. But can you help me understand some? You said, I don't know if I heard it right. What's the kangaroo man? That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the brother's name. That, that's, he, he's an investor. He's investing with his family. He, me and him talked about it yesterday because I was like, yo, this is funny. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, but what do you like to be called? And he was like, no, I like when I talk to people to call me kangaroo man because I know that they're going to remember me by the time we get in talk, start talking about transactions. And I was like, no, that's 100% true because like I haven't forgot you. Like ever since Julie was like, yeah, this dude named kangaroo man. <laughs> All right, cool. I thought I was missing something. I'm like, no, yeah. no, that's his. That's that's our strategy going forward. He's like, yo, we could we could see about working together again. But like, yeah, I, I go in talking about, hey, I'm Kangaroo Man, and the people remember me. Beautiful, beautiful. I love it, my man. And and what did we say earlier about separating yourself? I mean, there's a consumer separating himself from all the consumers. So, a uh, great job to you. Great job to Julie, and great job to Roxanne. And love this partnership. All right, guys, let's uh, continue moving on. We had Ginger Jordan on the um, board at 749,000. Mr. Ryan Combs on the board for 905,000. And Jen and I got in contract for 905,000. Uh, actually, that's 825. Let me switch that out. But Ryan, I'm going to turn it over to you, my man. Let's talk about this deal. And this is a flex deal. So go ahead and take the mic for a second. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, this is my first flex deal, actually, and my first client that I converted in flex. Um, so we have been working together for. I don't, I don't know when I first got on Flex, probably five, four or five months. We've seen numerous homes and only submitted two offers before this most recent one. And um, we, I showed them the house. They, the husband was on board. The wife was like, uh, you know, her dad is in construction. So she has a very like keen eye to everything. She's like, 
it didn't necessarily have the charm she wanted, but it had the square footage they needed because they don't have kids yet. They're planning on having kids in the future. Um, college sweethearts. So they have a really cool story. And um, yeah, I uh, when they told me they were interested, I was already on my way to Dallas. So I'm right. I wrote the offer in Dallas and me and the listing agent are going back uh, countering uh, once or twice. And I couldn't have found out at a better time. Shout out to the team that was at the rooftop event um, that first Tuesday. But I literally get a call from the listing agent saying the sellers accepted our counter. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a dope feeling, man. So I appreciate it. Man, you can see it in your physiology. You can see the smile. You can see the true yeah. excitement, man. So love it. And, and not only congratulations on getting into contract, but congratulations on closing your first flex deal. So, so one of many. So what, what, what squad are you on for the people in the back of the room? Collective squad, holler. <laughs> uh, congratulations, my man. Congratulations. Fuck it, Dewey. <laughs> um, let's go over to Ginger, too. I want Ginger to talk about this deal. Uh, Ginger, uh, I don't think we've heard from you about your last transaction, so let's talk to you about this transaction. So, Ginger, you have a moment to talk about this deal? All right, we are going to... Good. Thank oh, you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so my last one for 705, uh, they, the sellers canceled. So my clients were like, well, you know what? We're still going forward. So I was like, okay. So um, I would say within two weeks, um, we've been um, communicating and I thought they were just going to just, he said, you know, we're just going to just, we're not in a hurry. We're going to take our time. And if we see something, we'll let you know. So, okay. So um, they saw a couple of properties. And again, they're in Southern California. And um, I made videos of the properties. And so on the second property, they liked it. And we wrote offer. And we got the offer accepted. So it's replacement. And it's higher. Oh. So, booyah. <laughs> oh, I love it. And, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about brands that are that are separating themselves. I mean, um, Ginger's rolled with this whole Flower Power brand. She's got the flower in her ear. It's on her cards. Like, she's, she's like, really representing this flower, flower power brand and it's working for her so uh way to stand out from the crowd and appreciate you and really good job thank you thank you everyone thank you elias yeah you got it all right guys let's continue on um so let's go to now all of these are not million dollar escrows however they equate to million dollars in production so gary uh, got in contract for a million 30 um angela rose look at this two transactions 842 and 245 and then Josue coming in with three transactions. Uh, so congratulations to all of you. Uh, Angela, are you on today? I know that you are traveling. She's not on. What about Gary? Gary, are you on? Nope. All right, let's go to Josue. Josue, are you on? All right, cool. So one big giant clap <laughs> for everyone. We are going to move on. Congratulations. Um, all right, so um, I love these faces here. Look at Donna and Will getting in the contract. 1.350. This was a flex deal. Congratulations. And Jen and I put up another deal together. We put uh, another client in contract for a million dollars, but I'm going to turn it over to Will. Um, Will, I, I want you to take the mic for a second. You have some big accomplishments that you just posted on social this last week. So I want you to talk about this deal and talk about the milestone that you just hit my man. So Mr. Smooth, Mr. Fashion, it's go ahead and take it away. From hi. hi, everybody. Yes. This is my 20th escrow, you guys. Uh, yay! And uh, the biggest- Congrats, Will. From, thank you. It's, it's uh, I Woo! literally had, had a, a, a breakthrough. Tony Robbins says, when everything changes, I had a breakthrough, you guys. Nothing, it's, nothing is the same. Last year, I was sitting here hopeless, like, I lost, I didn't have my job. Nothing is the same. You got this, Will, you got it. And then, and then I met you guys, right? I met Kenny, I met Elias and Karina. I wouldn't be here without you guys, seriously. Like, Man, dude, I, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm filled with emotion right now. Like, it, and I was, I'm super humble. Like I was, you know, like a little gay boy from Thailand. 
didn't was so confused, didn't understand anything. He wasn't happy. He was confused. You know, it's a breakthrough, right? You need to take control of yourself. Like that's the only thing that you can take control. You can't control anybody else but yourself. So that's what I did, right? I moved here. I fought it through all the way. And I, I like first, um, first bio cons first buyer consultation with you, Elias, never forget, right? I would never forget anybody that gave me the first meal that I was so hungry. And can you give me that too? Karina, I love you. I love you all, really. I love you all. Oh, let's all right. give you a big That's giant enough. hug. <laughs> we love you, my man. Like I, you guys, I, and I'm sure you heard of this before and I got goosebumps just hearing Will talk like, your what's your Roger Bannister? Someone brought this up in in coaching yesterday. What is your four minute mile? Before the four minute mile was was accomplished, everyone said you can't do it. Look what Will did in his first year in real estate. Not from a sales background, not even from this country. Dealt with all kinds of adversity and judgment, and look what he has accomplished in one year in this business. And he is just getting started just getting started what is your roger banister story we know what wills is right i love it i love it my man congratulations to you all of your continued success my man nothing but love and um i'm sure you've probably made um you know 75 percent of the people on the call cry today um so thank you for always being humble thank you for all of your contributions and thank you for always being vulnerable in this environment and uh Cheers to you, my man. Congratulations. So um, Kenny and I both want to talk about this today. Um, we are, this is incredible, you guys. This is, I know we talk about this weekly, but let's really put some things into contrast right now. Um, we have right now in pending escrows, 98,685,343 in pending escrows right now as a company. Right. If you add that with our closed production, we are literally $55 million away from our original goal of the year, which was hit $500 million. Well, if we're doing on an average of $20 million a week, we're going to blow that $55,000 out or $55 million out very soon. Um, so like we said, we adjusted our thoughts and adjusted our goals. Our goal is 700,000, 700 million for the year, you guys. So we have never once had this much pending volume. It's going to take two more deals and it's going to put us over. We're going to be at $100 million in pending volume, right? This is part of the vision, right? We have thought about this. We have said this. We have spoke this into existence. And then we've brought on the right type of talent that are going to produce these results. And you guys know the big picture. A lot of times Kenny and I are asked, well, what does it take to create a team, systems, tools, all these things? That's all great. But I think first and foremost, People need to understand where this company is going to understand the vision. If everyone understands the vision, then they know what we're working towards as the collective. The collective is what separates us from any other company out in the industry. Our collective wisdom, the way that we share, the way that we contribute, the way that we lift our brothers and sisters up in this environment is what's leading to our success. You guys, you put up 31 escrows just last week, over $19 million in production in one fucking week. I cannot be more excited, more proud of you, and more stoked to be in the position I'm in. So Kenny, I know you wanted to talk about this. Let me turn it over to you for a quick moment. And um, yeah, I'm obviously super excited about this. So yeah, Kenny, I mean, it's super, super exciting to put out those numbers and looking at our sales sheet, you know, at, I looked at our sales sheets uh, from January to August last year, we did $29 million in business uh, from January to August. And just in the last, um, you know, this year alone, we've done like combined from August, to August, we've done over like six, it's like 500 million, which is crazy. You know, this company has grown over 10 times. Uh, looking at real trends, we're already tracking to be the number one team in, in the US, which is super exciting to think, you know, this is kind of like the vision board. You post these numbers like a billion, but I don't know how we get there. I just know we're going to get there. Like, so you just got to, you know, think big and we, we have a formula for success. And I think time and time again, like, especially Will, great, great job, Will, you know, coming in, brand new agent has accomplished 20 deals in his first year which is, you know, like I said, the new benchmark, you know, I truly believe that our team has all the tools and if we don't have it, we'll build it or buy it, that we have all the resources that any agent can, can come here to succeed 
and learn how to build a business and leverage time. So every single, almost every single week, our pendings have went up, uh, our, our stats have went up. And I think people are just becoming stronger and stronger agents. And, you know, we're here to support your journey in that. Yeah. So you guys, it, I mean, incredible. Let's make sure today, I mean, we hit some milestones today, highest amount of pending volume, highest amount of uh, 31 transactions. I think that's a record for us in one week. Um, you know, 100 participants, Will hitting 20 deals. Like there are some huge social content here, you guys. So I want to encourage you and I want to push you to really let's light up Instagram today like we always do and let the world know like, oh my God, like this is such an incredible accomplishment. And so you guys, hats off to every single one of you. Thank you for everything that you do and contribute to the company. Um, Josue is not on, but when we see him, we want to give him a huge shout out. He's celebrating three transactions this week. He's committed to his success. He's constantly in coaching with me as well as in group coaching. And you guys don't know this, but he is traveling from, um, from Fresno to do business in the Bay Area. And he's got children, right? So, so to think about the drive time, making sure that he's a dad, making sure that he's there for everything, and he's still making it happen. So uh, congratulations to Josue. For making it happen and doing everything that you're doing so um yeah you guys I, i'm really excited about where we are um i want to turn it over to john as you guys can see we have some new offices we have some new potential offices um and then we're going to end up with a quick message in a moment here to the entire team so johnny boy i want to turn it over to you give us a quick update and overview on the offices and where we're at and uh what's in store for the agents yeah, the main, main big update is 215 Washington Street is up and running. It was pretty turnkey when we got it. We are going to be making some changes cosmetically to the space, but I'm sure you've seen it on Instagram. It's ready to go. Um, if you want access, just text me and I will set you up on NextKey, which is our keyless entry system. If you are in Dallas or ideally if you are traveling at all, uh, we'd like to see a negative test before you access the property. But yeah, 215 Washington Street. If you haven't already, go check it out. It's, it's awesome. Um, Brentwood it, it has been looking good. I know we're fi still fighting with HVAC companies. So thanks for your patience, everybody. But uh, Kenny and I toured some places in Walnut Creek yesterday. So some awesome stuff on the horizon. You guys know how Kenny works. So now that, now that he's looking at it, you know, who knows? But uh, more, more to come in Walnut Creek. See yeah, that. Walnut Creek, um, that, that really fancy looking one that you guys see me posting on Instagram, I don't think that's going to work for us. It's a really great looking spot, but there's no parking. Uh, so you need to be aware of that. But um, we looked at a, we looked at this cool spot next to T-Mobile and Ameritrade. If you guys, uh, this is like half a block from Pacific Catch. Um, it's 4,500 square feet. It's been vacant since the day they built it, which is kind of interesting. It's this big box with like, I don't know, like kind of L-shaped box. Um, but we got the price on it today and it, it's well within my budget. It's, it's this class a office suite. So we're trying to figure out what that would look like the timing of it. Um, cause in Walnut Creek, we're going to start minimizing that office down. We have a couple, our original three contracts are up in, uh, in December for our main three offices. And we're, we're going to keep those. Um, and then, but we have some that are ending in March and then June. I mean, this is just how fast we're growing. We have 50 people in the office. So I went and bought a bunch of offices. Now, we're not even filling those up and a bunch of people aren't using the offices now, but we grew too fast. But I'm going to try to free some contracts and move some things around. But, you know, we're, we're just growing with the rate of the steam. Uh, but we are going to be keeping the originals for sure. And then in Jack London, we're keeping our main space. Now, we have five offices there, by the way. Uh, but we're going to be able to let agents continue to use those while we kind of uh, ease into the new, new one. And you guys, as, as we move forward, um, we're, we're going to potentially get an office in Santana Row and San Jose. Um, we're looking at- Oh yeah, I'm looking in Wednesday, I'm going to Santana Row in San Jose. Thursday, I'm going to um, 1700 Montgomery Street in yep. San Francisco to look at office space. So like said, like everything we said we do, we do it. So we're looking at uh, San Jose and San Francisco next week. And you guys, we're also looking um, Stockton. We're looking, you know, Vallejo. We're looking um, um, Solano County. And we're also looking, um, you know, to form a partnership and launch in Lake Tahoe as well. Um, so you guys, these are early preliminary conversations that we just had yesterday. Um, so yeah, we're, we are thinking wide, we are thinking far, we are thinking global. Uh, but yeah, you guys, we have some big opportunities coming down the road. And so um, how cool would it be to have an office up in Lake Tahoe? So uh, we're, we're very excited. So 
You guys, we um, had a senior leadership meeting this morning and we've made a decision uh, for the company. So we wanted to share our thoughts with you guys. We wanna make sure that we're all in unison and you understand exactly um, why we came up with these decisions and where we're going. So um, Kenny, Karina, um, let's go ahead and um, I'm turning over to you guys and then you know we'll all chime in from the senior leadership department. So uh, what is the decision we've came up with about vaccinations? Karina, you're gonna go first. Karina, you there? Is Karina here? Mm, she's on mute. Okay, I got it. Um, yeah, so like previous meeting, we said for the for the new re so we we made some changes, but for the new retail spaces that we're opening up, we require vaccination. This is kind of you know, it's a business decision. You know, we're gonna we're following suit with what's going on in the environment. It's not personal decision by any means. Like my my worst concern is that. Some like you know whether you wanted or the vaccine or not that's up to, completely up to you. I hang out with people with non-vaccinated, went to Dallas, like whatever, like. But for our events, we want to be able to protect people and make people comfortable that are are wanting that in the environment. So moving forward, um, the co-working spaces we have, like Walnut Creek in Oakland, will be untouched. You can continue to use them. So we're not taking away anything away from the agents. But and by October, we we will require vaccinations to use the large retail spaces. The thoughts behind that is. In the large retail spaces, it's one big open environment. So people are feeling comfortable. They're not going to come use the offices. But in the co-working spaces, you can also divide separate and separate up. There's a lot of different uh, rooms to be used. So that way, it's a compromise so people can use it. Like what I would hate, you know, our reputation is online as a business. So this is a complete business decision. What I would hate is someone catches COVID, which many of our agents have. It's, it's, you know, we can't avoid that. But I wouldn't want someone to die. Like, and then if that happens because they're unvaccinated, much, much higher chance of science. You know, that's really bad reputation on us. Other brokers will be talking shit for the rest of our lives about how unresponsible we were to allow that to happen in our environment from one of our events and stuff like that. So that's why for using the office on a daily basis for the new retail offices like Oakland, um, like Brentwood, existing one, like the new, um, where we're opening that, Hercules? Hercules, Hercules um, and Hayward, those will require it. And then... So that, 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 that's just a decision we have to make as a company to protect our, our brand. Again, you, you guys can choose the vaccine or not, but there's still office a lot for you. This is a team fast. I pay for offices, so I'm making that decision. But the offices like co spaces, you can still use it. Regis still has it. This is not an ESP requirement. So realize, you know, you guys are all freelancers. You guys can do what you want. But it's, if I'm paying for the space, I want to be feel comfortable in my own environment. And then for future activities, um, we will mostly have outdoor events, but it's going to get cold soon. So um a lot, maybe I'd like to talk about the indoor events and what, what we're uh, requiring. Yeah, so just so we're clear, you guys, if it is a co-working space that you guys do not have to have to be vaccinated, you guys can work wherever you want in the space. And then also you can work at any of the Regis offices that EXP offers you. If it is a fast real estate independent office that Kenny pays for, then we're asking that people are vaccinated to use those spaces. But we didn't want to take anything away from you guys because at the end of the day, you can still go to co-working spaces and work there. Um, let's talk about events that we're going to have at any of our offices moving forward. Whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, if we are going to have an event, whether it's indoor or outdoor, we're asking that everyone get a negative code of the test within 48 hours prior to the event to make sure that everyone is safe. Anybody that went to Dallas, um, like for example, we have a um, top producer dinner tonight for the top producers from last month. Everyone was required to get a COVID test before they came to the event tonight. And if they had a negative, unfortunately, you know, obviously they have to get well and they have to quarantine. So Dewey got his, Peter got his, Kenny got his. And so we're all safe. So at the end of the day, you guys, we want to protect you. We want to protect your families. We want to protect the elderly people. And we also want to protect the big vision of the company and the brand. And so, um, you know, hopefully you guys uh, understand. Hopefully we're all in unison on this. Nothing was taken away from you just making sure that we are protecting ourselves. So does anybody have any questions before we move forward? No? Nope? All right, cool. There's quite a few people here. So this is a really, really broad message. Really thank you guys. And listen, this shit sucks. We know it. This whole thing has sucked since it started. And, and we get that. Uh, we're trying to make the best decisions for, uh, for the company. So um, Kyle Hively, are you on? I'm gonna have you take yourself off uh, or put your camera on. Are you there? Oh, yeah, you already know, man. What can I do for you? All right, so motion creates motion. What I want you guys to do as we're heading towards the end of this meeting, I want you guys to flex your bicep as hard as you can. All right, now, Kyle, what, how, how do we do this? 
You wind up the left hand. Wind, wind it up. up the left or right hand. Left or right, whichever one you don't got flexing, and okay. whap it. And what do you say to yourself? <laughs> it's time to get going, baby. <laughs> time to get going, baby. So slap your bicep, get out there and handle your shit. Thank you guys for making this meeting a record meeting for Fast Real Estate. Thank you for all of your contributions. Thank you for everything that you represent. Kyle, thank you for always bringing the fire, the energy. Melody, Ryan, Christina Darrow, thank you for your takeaways and your insight from the Tony Robbins event. I'm looking forward to featuring more and more of you guys at the meetings as we move forward just to spice things up. So once again, you guys, thank you for all your continued support. Will, we love you. Thank you for all of your contributions and everything that you've done um, in this past year. Let's go out there and get it. Top producers, I'll see you tonight. Wait, wait, wait. Kathy has a good question for the uh, for oh. guests that, for guests that meet us in the office. Does that re vax re requirements happen too? It should, right? Oh, so, so sorry, I didn't touch on this. Um, I I got confirmed, but I, I feel I, I think it's leaning towards um, they're welcome to the office, but they have to keep their masks on. I, I think I think the thing main thing about like us using retail offices, we're not requiring masks, and we prefer not to wear you know be a little more open using the spaces. Otherwise, it, it might be a. a the guests can come, but they have to wear a mask. I think was fair because you might. I don't want you. This to affect your actual physical business. Or be smart if, if if you think they might not be vaccinated, go meet them somewhere else. Coffee shops are open. Again, our co-working spaces are still open. You can go to Walnut Creek at any given time. Uh, you can go to Jack Linnet at any given time to use. We have five offices there. You're welcome to meet with them if you feel that they're safe and you're you don't you know you wouldn't put yourself at risk if you think they're they're unsafe so you wouldn't put that on everyone else in within the environment either right um, so, guys, so um kelly what's the address kenny if you could drop the address really quick sure two one five washington street it's nice if you guys need to just look up fat lady that's the restaurant fat lady we're, we're immediately to the right of fat lady you hey guys, can i make a new uh new spot for hoodies and t-shirts what's up Hoodies and T-shirts in two one five Washington, or oh yeah, bring them all. We'll, 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 yeah. yeah, bring them we all. Have we'll, storage, we'll we have storage yes. in the back, man. We have tons of swag space, sign space, uh, yard signs. All those. We have more storage than we need there. All right, you guys. Cool. Have all a right, wonderful, guys. wonderful day. We'll see you guys soon.